What's the number one thing you need to know about thyroid health this year? It might not be your thyroid. And actually, Yale School of Medicine published a study in March of 2023 that said 90% of people who were prescribed levothyroxine were probably unnecessarily prescribed it and may have permanent health damages due to that. The other name that levothyroxine goes by is Synthroid. Synthroid has been on the market for a very long time and has been given so many times unnecessarily and without symptom resolution. Why is that? <clears throat> levothyroxine or Synthroid is T4 and to not feel the sluggishness, headaches, weight gain, hair loss of thyroid dysfunction, you actually need T3. But T3, 80% of it, is produced at the cellular level through a process called methylation. So if 80% of what you need is produced at the cellular level, why are we killing the thyroid by giving it T4 and telling it to stop all production? I don't know either. What else do you need to know about levothyroxine or Synthroid? It shuts down thyrotropin stimulating hormone which shuts down production of a hormone called gastrin, which shuts down production of stomach acid. This actually makes it harder to digest your food. So food sits in your stomach longer, you eat smaller meals, but you're still gaining weight. And that's because even what you do absorb in the small intestine, you can't absorb efficiently. And so your body starts to store everything as fat, which is why you're not losing weight. The other thing to know is that with 80% of T3 being produced at the cellular level, when they run a full thyroid panel, they're not even testing your thyroid at that point. They are testing your inflammation in your system and what's happening at the cellular level. But if we know that T4 gets converted to T3 via methylation and T1 plus T2 gets converted to T3 at the cellular level, also via methylation, shouldn't we find out if somebody can methylate before we just give them medication that they can't really use anyway? My answer would be yes. And how do we find that out? Genetic testing. And they've been doing genetic testing of the MTHFR gene on its own for at least a decade. A decade. So besides your genetics, what are other things that'll prevent you from methylating? Not eating enough vegetables, honest to goodness. Not eating enough vegetables with the right balance of antioxidants to produce anti-inflammatory properties and not getting enough of your B vitamins that are highly absorbable. What else? not having appropriately appropriate number of methyl donors so if your body's under a lot of stress you'll use up those methyl donors really fast those methyl donors are needed for methylation methyl donors are things like sami and i'm going to blank on the other one right off the top of my head i apologize for that stress because when you're under stress you use up those methyl donors so fast so in order to know whether or not your thyroid is working, yes, you need a full thyroid panel. But if your T3 comes back low, you can only blame 20% of that on the thyroid. 80% of it is cellular level. And if it comes back low and they say, let's put you on syn Synthroid, it has a good track record. Yale Medical says, no, it doesn't. 90% of people shouldn't be on it. So refuse that before they do a methylation test. Because if you can't methylate, levothyroxine or Synthroid does you no good. Hope this helps you make good medical decisions this year regarding thyroid health, metabolic health, and whether or not you can actually absorb your food and maintain the health of your gut. If you have questions about this or want to know more about how to get your genetics tested and how to improve your gut health if you've been on levothyroxine, book a call.